Sophie Turner is a phenomenal actress who is most well known for her role on Game of Thrones as Sansa Stark. And she's also the main character in the upcoming film, Dark Phoenix. But she was recently on the Dr. Phil podcast opening up about her depression and there's a lot that we can take away from this. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. If you're new to my channel, something I'm very, very passionate about is mental health and us working on our mental health. So when somebody like Sophie Turner, who is in the public spotlight, is talking about mental health, I like to shine a light on that. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So like the title of this video says, why Sophie Turner goes to therapy. The first thing I want to talk about before I kind of break down uh, this podcast she was on with Dr. Phil is like there's such a stigma around going to therapy. Check it out. I need therapy. I go to therapy. You need therapy. We all need therapy. Everybody needs therapy. Like I like I, I, I don't know why it is. Well I do know why it is but there's a stigma around this. Like if you say like oh you should probably go to therapy like people think that that's a sick burn or something like but it's just true. Like all of us have issues. All of us are our own version of crazy. We're all a little bit nuts and we all have things that we need to work on through therapy. So I highly recommend that you do like myself, Sophie Turner, and many, many other people on the planet Earth and give therapy a shot. Like talk to your doctor, see if they can recommend a therapist. Talk to your insurance provider, see if there's a therapist in your network that you can go to. Talk to friends, see if they can recommend a therapist. If you would like, I personally use BetterHelp Online Therapy. There's an affiliate link down below. So if you sign up for it, a little bit of that goes back to help support the channel. But it's a great service that I use too, all right? But anyways, like I said, Sophie Turner recently um, opened up about her depression on Dr. Phil's podcast. And it's, it's interesting because the first thing that I want to talk about is she, she opens up about imposter syndrome, all right? And, like, she is arguably one of the biggest actresses on one of the biggest shows right now, right? Game of Thrones is in its final season, but she talks about how she didn't feel good enough. She even mentions in this podcast, and I'll link it down below for all of you, how she... She lets those negative voices get to her, like, like, oh, she just kind of got this role by accident, she's not all that great, and all these other things. Like, I can definitely relate to that, and any of you who struggle with imposter syndrome, I guarantee you can relate to that as well. Like, even with, you know, the evidence that we're doing well, maybe it's at our job, or maybe it's in school, or maybe it's just in life in general, like, our mind tells us that we're not good enough, we don't deserve this, somebody better should be doing this. And that is one of the reasons why therapy is so beneficial because it helps us deal with these various cognitive distortions, the lies that our brain tells us. Something that she goes into too is um, how social media plays a role. Like this is something that a lot of people in the spotlight deal with, I struggle with it, a lot of other YouTube creators struggle with it, a lot of just other influencers struggle with it. Like. We, we take in all of this feedback from people who don't personally know us. Like Sophie Turner talks about how people say she's not a great actress. They talk about how she's gaining weight, like so many things. And she actually has some good tips. Like she talks about how she like doesn't even check comments or anything. I'm like, you go girl. And she says sometimes she has a little cheat and she checks in on them, right? So the next thing that she talks about when she was dealing with her depression because she would be very isolative and just not wanna leave her house. It was hard to just get out of bed. She talks about how she would, you know, lean on other other members of her support group and they can kind of work through these things together. And this is something I cannot recommend enough to all of you. Like, if it wasn't for my support group, especially when I was in the deepest, darkest time of my life about seven years ago when I first got sober, like, it was people coming to me with that tough love and saying like, yo, get out of bed, yo, take a shower today, yo, let's go to a meeting, yo, let's go get coffee, let's go, you know, to a movie, let's go play board games, whatever it is. I needed people to be there for me and force me to get out of my own head, my self-pity, my negative thoughts, and all these other things. So if you do not have a support group, find one. There are plenty of resources. You can check Facebook groups, you can check Meetup, and it doesn't have to be like a mental health support group. Like, 
Find people in your area who have the same hobby as you. Like maybe you get involved in a local like yoga group or workout group or art group or crafting group or knitting group or cooking group, whatever it is. Find some kind of support group. Like as human beings, we are designed to be connected with one another. Isolation is the absolute worst thing that we can do with our mental health. The analogy I always give is like when we're in that dark headspace, when we isolate, it's like being in a horror movie and locking yourself inside the room with the killer. This thing can be our worst enemy. So when Sophie Turner's talking about how her support uh, group was helping her, she was able to start getting out of those early stages of depression or late stages of depression rather. The next thing that she talks about, Dr. Phil asked her like, what are you doing differently today for your depression? And she just like candidly says like therapy, like I'm in therapy. Like, yes, yes, all right? Like, therapy is so beneficial. It's something that um, I recently started doing, like, uh, months ago. But for the most part, my therapy came through, like, 12-step programs and my own, um, like, self-personal uh, development and everything like that. But, yeah, therapy is great because it gives you an outside perspective. We need somebody from the outside to give us a perspective on this thing. And licensed therapists, or maybe it's a psychologist that you're meeting with, like, they will help you identify the root causes of your problems, right? A lot of these things stem from our childhood, things that we aren't even aware of because we suppressed them for so long, we didn't address them, and they're just sitting there and they're playing this active role in our adult lives. But a therapist is also there to give you tools that you can use to get out of those negative thought patterns and learn how to set up healthy boundaries to get toxic people out of your life. Because you might have people in your life who are feeding into that negative, uh, mindset that you can't seem to get out of, out of. Like maybe it's your family, maybe it's your friends, maybe it's your fellow uh, co-workers, whatever it is. That is what a therapist can do for us. But not only does she talk about going to therapy, but she also talks about how she's on medication. Yes, 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 girl. Like there is such a stigma around medi medication. Like a lot of people feel that trying a medication is a weakness. It's like giving up, right? Medications, like by no means, no means are medications like a cure-all or a fix-all, all right? Medications for most people, and again, I'm not a doctor or a therapist, but this is from my own experience and the research I've done and the studies I've read and everything like that. Medications are designed to get you to a base level, okay? So if you're somebody who is so depressed that you cannot even get out of bed, a medication will get you to the point where you can at least get out of bed, get out of the house, shower every day. You know what I mean? Like, this is what antidepressants are good for, but they are not going to fix your entire life. Again, this is why therapy in conjunction with medication is so beneficial because we get to a base level because it's helping to, um, in many cases, generate um, various neurotransmitters in our brain or making the neurotransmitters a little bit stickier so they can reproduce. They get us to a base level, so there's nothing to be ashamed about when it comes to like antidepressants, all right? I am personally on a non-narcotic medication called Lexapro. It's an antidepressant, anti-anxiety medication. I was diagnosed with depression and generalized anxiety disorder. But for other people, like I know some people, you know, take Xanax, that's not something that I take for my anxiety because I am a drug addict in recovery, so I will abuse an addictive medication, right? But my suggestion is talk to a doctor, see um, if there's anything they can help you out with S because some doctors, some primary care physicians can prescribe certain antidepressant slash anti-anxiety medications. Or if you're able to go see a psychiatrist, one thing that I will say just from my experience, for your first visit with a psychiatrist, it can often be like a long wait. So it depends on how severe the issue is. Like if you feel like you are in a rut and you want like change, like go talk to a doctor and start sooner rather than later. Now, the other thing to um, kind of put out there is most medications do not act immediately. For many medications, like like I mentioned, I'm on Lexapro. Um, there's other things like you know Prozac, Zoloft, and things like that. Those can take you know a few weeks for you to really start to notice the changes. Okay, but like I said, the sooner you start, the sooner you start to get to that baseline that I'm talking about. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is Sophie Turner talks about 
one of the things that have helped her with her self-love and getting over her imposter syndrome and her body issues and all that is her amazing husband, uh, Joe Jonas, all right? So she mentioned something along the lines of, like when you have somebody there who loves you more than anything and they're telling you that every day, you start to believe it. And I can't agree more. But the only thing that I'll say just from my personal experience, and you might be able to relate to this, is that I used to try to find people to fix me, right? I used to not love myself and I used to have that idea, well, well, if I find somebody who can love me, that means I'm lovable and it would get me into bad, toxic relationships. Now, for the last, you know, over two years now, I've been in an amazing relationship with my beautiful girlfriend, Tristan, but before I would set the bar really low because I was just finding somebody who would love me until I could love myself. And I ended up having to stay single for a while because I kept getting in a pattern of bad relationships because I was dating at my self-esteem level. So I took a long break from dating so I can work on myself. So I will say, like if you're somebody who's single or you have a, a, a poor dating pattern like I did, you don't necessarily need to find like a relationship or you know a husband or a wife or whatever it is for that to happen. For me, when it initially happened was I just started hanging around better friends. I started hanging around friends who loved me for me. They weren't hanging around me because I had something to give them. I wasn't keeping them around because they had something to give me. Like for most of my life, for 27 years of my life, I'm 33 years now, I didn't really fully understand what like a true friendship was. And I had people who could love me until I loved myself, but it was a friendship. It wasn't, you know, something based on like attraction. Like, you know, three of my best friends who I met when I first got sober, they're, they're all guys, right? You know, like I, I do have really good friends who are women as well and stuff like that, but like I just needed friends who genuinely cared about me with that unconditional love. and. That is what helped me realize that I am lovable, you know, and it helps me with those negative thoughts, negative voices and all those things. All right. So anyways, again, super, super happy that Sophie Turner took the opportunity to open about uh, open up about her uh, depression. Um, I will not tell you. I guess I will tell you now since I started that sentence. I don't watch Game of Thrones, but I'm thinking about getting caught up so I can do some videos on it. Please don't thumbs down this video just because I don't watch Game of Thrones. I'm working on it. It's just very complicated and very confusing. There's a lot of families and a lot of things going on. But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You're all amazing and don't forget, Go out, seek help, find a therapist, talk to somebody. If you would like to sign up for BetterHelp Online Therapy, it is down in the description below. All right? Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.